so welcome back, Jim. Uh, sure, thanks for having me. We appreciated your last lecture, uh, very insightful. One of the other topics students tr have trouble with is when we're talking about the general energy equation, we have potential energy and kinetic energy. Those make sense early on. But then we have this thing called PV and, you know, which is the flow energy or the, the some, it's used, uh, it's called a couple different things, which is what starts confusing students. And then we also have internal energy, but then we, as we learn more about the general energy equation, we just start combining a couple of those. And uh, I, I think we need to talk through why we do that and what that is. Okay. Could you help us? Yeah, so um, specifically for the, you know, on the general energy equation, you look at the terms there. Um, what's nice, if, if you can, is to set up a system or an analysis of the system such that you can either combine some terms or maybe even just wholeheartedly get rid of them. So, um, so for example, on a constant flow system, right, so like we're, we're constantly flowing water through the reactor, through turning it to steam, sending it through the the turbine and then the steam condenses right and it's yeah. essentially a you know a constant flow if you will system okay there's, there's makeup and there's going to be some losses but so by and large when you go to analyze that system terms that would be associated with say changes in kinetic energy and changes in potential energy um, really cancel each other out for a full when you do the full loop. Yeah, so there's so really, you know, we're not pumping water up a hill and then seeing, you know, how much energy does it have or... Because we do take it back down. Because we're just taking it right cycling back through. So, so for an entire cycle, the potential energy and the kinetic energy just, just cancel each other cancel out. Cancel out. Okay. That's right. So what you're basically left with is your um, PV term. Okay. And your internal energy term. And then, of course, there's work. The so system's doing work. Um, which would be like in a reactor plant, right? The work is the turbine taking that heat energy and turning it into rotational energy. So we're doing work on the system. And then the heat that we're adding into the system is coming from our fuel, right? yeah. from the reactor. Okay. So you've got a Q term and you've got a W term. All right. Um, so those should be pretty self-explanatory. But let's key in on the, the PV term in the general energy equation and the internal energy. So PV, again, it's gonna be just the work, or it's, it's effectively like work. It's energy, it's work, it, right? So if the you, units if you, we use are often foot-pounds force. That's right, so, you know, we are dealing with, right, a gas, steam is a gas, and so the fact that it's a gas and it's flowing through the system, it's gonna have energy associated with that. Okay. It's called, you know, we, so given the pressure and the specific volume of that. Uh, and we often substance, call it flow energy. That's right. So it's a system, you know, if you've got a constant flow system, the fact that it's flowing is going to have some energy associated with that. Okay. The other thing, and we kind of touched on it in the, the previous talk a little bit, um, as far as like sensible heat. Um, the energy associated with a certain phase, so let's say we're in a liquid phase, right? Yeah. And it's at a certain temperature. All right, there, you can basically quantify, right, how, how much energy is associated with that system for a given set of conditions, temperature and pressure, right? There's a certain amount of energy involved in all those molecules bouncing around. Okay. Right? If the temperature slash pressure of the system is at a different state, that internal energy, that it may be, they may be more excited or they may be less excited, okay? So there's a certain right. amount of energy internal to the the working fluid in this case. Okay. Um, and, and so, <clears throat> for practical terms, what we'll do is we will just combine that that flow energy piece as well as the internal energy piece, and we call that term enthalpy. And so, since both those terms are again properties of the system, enthalpy itself is also a process, a property for that system. You can derive it using the general energy equation, and it's something that you can actually measure. Okay. All right, so it's, it's a useful quantity. In fact, you'll see it in the steam tables. Um, for a given pressure, temperature for a saturated system, you will see terms given for the enthalpy. Right? What is the, the combination of the internal energy and the flow energy for a given state? 
And that's, what is that amount? Right? And that's just combining that P so that, times V, that pressure times that, volume. That PV term plus the internal energy? Plus the U. Okay. We call that enthalpy. And now I've also heard enthalpy called the amount of energy available to do work. Is that accurate? Amount of energy to do work. Well, you don't get anything for free. True. Um, but in, I guess in a, in a certain sense it, it is. Um, there's going to be, you know, a, a certain trade-off. Um, but obviously the more energy that is in the system available to do work, the more the chances are at the end of the line you can perform that work. Right? Okay. And I think on a Mollier diagram, when we're actually doing uh, diagramming the amount of work done by a turbine, that is generally a constant entropy process but a drop in enthalpy, and we measure it by the amount of enthalpy. That's right. So how much enthalpy is used up okay. can be correlated to how much useful work that the turbine outputs. Right? All right. And one of the th confusing things about enthalpy versus entropy, especially when we start talking about the Mollier diagram, the enthalpy-entropy diagram, right, is we, if we think about enthalpy as the amount of energy available to do work, and then we do a process such as the work done by a turbine, that makes sense. But when we do a throttling process, which is a constant enthalpy process, which means no work is done, we're changing the entropy. And entropy, I've also heard called the amount of, of energy unavailable to do work. Because a change in entropy is not a work process. Right, I mean, the way I learned it in school, um, I was like, what the heck is entropy? How, how do I make a, a mental model of what that is? And it's really kind of a measure of how much, uh, let's see, how my professors, amount of disorganization, right? So yeah. as, as, as you have a transfer of heat or energy, when you trans, transform one type of energy into another, you're, you're heading towards a ultimate end state where there's more randomness, more disorder, right? Okay. And so eff effectively what you're looking at is when you, when you make that energy conversion from one type or another, the part that you, you have to give up in order to get the amount of useful work out, it's not a, it's not a one for one conversion, right? You can't, you can't take every jewel of work and, and turn it into, you know, all right. a, a useful amount of uh, rotational energy. There's going to be a cost, and so that cost of energy that you gave that you give up in the process is effectively increasing the entropy. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay. okay. So between again, nothing's for free. There's no there's no perpetual motion machines out there. I think um, that's almost. Quotes one of the thermodynamic laws. Yeah, <laughs> Nothing's for free. The, it's the third one. <laughs> right? You, can, you can't create it. You can convert it. But when you do convert it, you don't get that 100% conversion. And that part that it costs you, the fact that the system is going from a certain state of organization to something that's lower now, that, that value is what, what's been associated with entropy. So you can, you can keep the entropy. Like I said, going back to the Mollier diagram, you can do a throttling process where you have the enthalpy constant, but this the system is changing, right? You've yep. throttled something. So the way the system in total from an energy um, balance perspective, you're going to increase the entropy okay. of the system. There has been a change to the system. You just don't see it physically in the form of additional work or basically we've lost some of that system's ability <coughs> to do work. That's right. So it's not useful in the in the strictest sense.